Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Pami Yaku Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I am your host. And today I am joined by Franz Boise. Both. Both. Sorry. You are German, so you did give me the German pronunciation as well, but I can't quite wrap my tongue around that one. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Now, you are the chief marketing officer of Silent Yachts. Um, it's just actually come to my attention in maybe the last month because, um, you know, we saw a lot of doom and gloom at the beginning of sort of the pandemic and up pops Silent Yachts, which ticked all the boxes. Um, it, it was uh, environmentally friendly and you guys were selling like hotcakes, even though um, the industry was like in, in a bit of a panic um, and, and you were doing some interviews and it, it looked really interesting. So I wanted to have you on board. So thank you for joining us. First of all, thank you for, for the invitation. Um, well, yes, and thanks for, for contacting us. Um, yeah, I mean, um, in general, I would say the pandemic didn't hit us too hard and um, yeah, we like you said, we we are still able to to sell, and I guess the main reason for that is in the situation people now see that um, like that we are living in a fragile system, or that that also um, that now as the pollution goes down, that the nature and everything around it recovers, like what we see in. Uh, Venice, for example, and yeah, that's why I think this is definitely one reason why we got even more attention than usual. Well, you know, I see what you're doing now and I find it really fascinating. You're fairly young still and you are chief marketing officer of such an amazing company. Tell me where you're from and sort of what your education was. Oh, so uh, the, full, the full story. Um, the full story. <laughs> oh, I make it short. Um, so after school, I did um, an apprenticeship as a tax consultant. So I did three years in a tax consultancy, and but this like this was a good experience, but uh, <laughs> not what I wanted to do my entire life. And uh, then I started studying, um, like uh, business studies and. Already during that time, I, I was always interested in renewable energy. So I used to work in a in a big energy company based here in Germany, in like part time um, in the renewable energy section. And after that, I applied at Tesla. Um, I, I worked for Tesla, and um, which like. <laughs> Back then, I was fascinated by the whole, like the CEO, of course, but also the whole concept behind it, why they are doing what they are doing. And it was not that I was, that I am a car guy, but um, yeah, I liked the mission and the vision. And, but um, my main focus there was on the energy products. So apart from the cars, they, they make the energy products like the solar roof tiles, the um, the power walls, the energy storage systems, people install in their homes to store the energy, which they um, gathered through the solar panels on the roof. And well, that's basically exactly what we are doing on Silent Yards. But um, yeah, after that, I, I went studying again. Um, in Amsterdam for a year, like I did my master's degree, and yeah, during during that time, I, I I got in contact with Silent Yards for the first time, like during my during my time at Tesla, and during my master studies, I this the the idea and the concept behind it got me from the first second. Let's keep it that way. And um, how did you how did you find out about Silent Yards in the first place? It was a coincidence. I, I was in, I did a Europe trip with my girlfriend, and um, at some point we we uh, we we've been in Cannes, and it was the time of the Cannes Yachting Festival, 
and basically we just visited the the yacht show we walked around and there was one boat that had that was the roof was completely filled with solar panels and um, that's how it got my interest so i got in contact with with one of the team i don't remember who was the first contact person there but and then we started talking and like michael and heike the the, the founders um, they have been at the show with a Tesla as well, so I don't know, that was part of our conversation, definitely, and after that, Heike showed us, showed, um, showed us the boat for almost an hour, and I don't know, from that, from that day, I was like, I loved the idea and what they were doing, and from that uh, point of time, I also like made research, who else is doing such kind of boats and yachts and um, also their history and I don't know I followed I followed uh, the story and I think one and a half years later I was at the point where I needed to write my master thesis and that's how I got back in contact again with with Michael and Heike and then I wrote my thesis and then everything happened like it should be, I guess. <laughs> and uh, I started working with them and well, now it's been almost one and a half years and yeah, we are very grateful of how it developed and that's where we are now. <laughs> Well, you know, talking about silent yachts, it's, you know, the concept is really cool. It's catamarans, essentially. Yes, it's catamarans. catamarans and for always. me, that's good news because I, I can't go on a regular yacht because catamarans are the only ones that are stable enough for me not to get seasick. But uh, so that excited me as well. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, with catamarans, you have the, like, you have the, the space on the roof. If you have a monohull, then you, like, you, you, can't place the same amount of solar panels, so you will would generate much less energy. That's one of the main reasons, apart from many other benefits of a catamaran. But yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about these boats. How did they come about, and what was the thought process behind them? Was it a yachting company that wanted to go with renewable energy or cleaner energy, or was it um, a a renewable energy company that wanting to go the yachting route or was it both well um i think for the for the full history and starting process you uh, michael would would be a good uh, partner to interview as well at some point but one of the key factors was that um that at some point they just thought that the sun is more reliable than wind, like in comparison. And um, that they tried to sail with the sun. And basically they began from scratch, um, as far as, as I know um, the history. They, they uh, built a prototype, like a 46, 46 feet catamaran. And they started with putting solar panels everywhere, figuring figuring it out. Um, Michael also wrote a book about it. About the, it's called um, energy energy management on yachts. It's the English title, and I know he's he's currently writing on a new version of it, and it already has been the fifth version, I guess. So there's a lot of like like a long research and development phase behind it, um, frig figuring it all out on their own. Like they also uh, tried wind generators and what, like, what makes sense if you just, if you go straight to, we want to have solar electric powered catamaran. So built from scratch with that purpose. 
How luxurious are these catamarans and, and how big can they get? Is it something that, say, for example, somebody who is normally on a super yacht would say, you know what, that looks of interest to me and it will offer me the same amenities and the same cruise space and the same abilities to have the same fun on my super yacht, for example? Yes, I am. Um, I mean, I mean, until now, our biggest model has 80 feet. And there's no, why not creating um, a hundred feet silent yard? Um, as of today, I wouldn't know any reason why to say no to this. But so, yeah, we will see, uh, we will see where the future will head. But um, I don't know, never say never. Uh, so in terms of scaling, like making uh, bigger silent yachts, I don't know where is the limit, but uh, 80 is not, I think. 80 feet is not. And in these yachts, they have all the amenities as well, exactly like any other yacht. And everything is, is powered by solar. Is there a backup plan? Yes, absolutely. Like uh, every silent yacht comes with a backup generator. So you have the solar panels, you have the battery storage system, you have the electric motors and you power the boat like all household appliances and amenities also through the through the solar panels. Everything is powered through the solar panels. But like if you would have a black sky for several days, then you always have the generator. You have always have this um, backup solution. And also, you, you will need it if you want to go longer distances fast. So, no need to worry. So, it is an ideal cruiser if you're looking to cruise or, um, you know, even longer distances, as you said, as long as you've got the backup generator. Is it something that you would make a transatlantic crossing, for example, in? Yes, yes. Um, has already been done. Um, in 2018, in February, they uh, crossed the, the Atlantic Ocean with a 64 model. They started in Cartagena, Spain, went to, uh, went to the Canary Islands, then to like the uh, Cap, Cap Verde, to Cap Verde, and from Cap Verde to Barbados, and from Cartagena to, to, to Barbados, it was 34 days. There will be like uh, right now. There is a, a new, a little, um, let's say, a little documentation about it. Um, the, we we recently interviewed the captain who did the crossing, and there will be a, a new video about it online in in a short in short time. Um, yeah, so that's definitely possible. Um, they they used they they used uh, like around a thousand liters of diesel so it was not 100 percent sourced by the power of the sun but um this was also because of one week of very bad weather with eight to ten meter waves and like cloudy weather for almost fully do you have any idea on a normal crossing how much diesel that would have used a lot more like yeah um no, I don't have. I, it, it also depends, of course, on, on the speed. They, they didn't cross it with 10 knots, but with uh, five or six. And um, so it's, it's, it's a little piece compared to, to, to a regular motor yacht. Right. So what are the plans for Silent Yacht next? Where, where do you think you're going aside from possibly getting bigger? Are you going to be, um, you know, looking at other alternative, you know, methods of energy to increase the energy efficiency, et cetera? Um, yeah, I mean, every, every silent model is the latest. We, we always build in the latest state of the art technology in terms of the batteries. Of course, they get better from year to year. Also, the solar panels, um, they, the capacity and how much they can absorb gets better. And we, we always keep uh, everything up to date, like especially for the new models we bring out and also the like the 
interior and exterior design further develops. Um, as you, for example, see um, the Silent 60, we, which the first one will be launched this autumn, um, is already like every 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 little like not mistake, but everything that we noticed on the Silent 55, which which could have been uh, designed and drawn and built a little better, we implemented on the 60, of course, and. So there is always a little um, progress in there. And apart from that, yeah, um, we, we are, the, the first 80 will, will, be also, will also be delivered this, this um, winter probably, end of this year. And hopefully then also the first Tridec will be delivered at some point, but earliest end of next year, I think. And yeah. So it's constantly pushing forward, it's constantly with research, it's constantly trying new things and keeping up to date on, on what is going to be kinder to the environment as well as continuing with the luxury aspect of it. Yes, exactly. And in terms like we, we, um, we have um, we will always, if, if there are better ways to, to integrate the energy um, production or other like cells, then we of course will implement it. Like we try to keep up to date. That's really exciting. And I gotta say um, to be chief marketing officer at your age as well, because you're not, you haven't even hit the 30 mark yet, have you? Not yet, not yet. Not yet. So um, congratulations on, you know, I mean, the fact that you have found your dream, you found your goal um, and you followed your heart and your destiny. And, and it brought you to Silent Yachts because your your sort of goal and dream was sustainable energy. And you have definitely followed that and, and managed to be successful in that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm very grateful for that. I think. One reason why I especially loved it was because during my time at Tesla, people were always like, well, the idea and everything behind it is great, but the energy you, you put in your car and your batteries, where's, where's it, where does it come from? And people like, people need to understand that it takes time to, 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 to like the, the transition to, to sustainable energy, to, to solar uh, energy production, to wind production, it, it takes time and you mm -hmm. can't do it from today to tomorrow. But with the silent yards, you already have solved this problem because you, you generate, you, you fill your batteries with clean energy. And the, I don't know, the idea of being out in the sea with unlimited range and the ability, the ability to to just live there, to to I don't know, to cook, to to do whatever you want to do, to to catch fish and like you have water make on board, you can do whatever you want without harm, harm, harm without like sacrificing uh, the environment. And I don't know, this is this is the main point why I still. Love this. Yeah. No, I see your passion and I admire that passion because I think, you know, we've seen an entire era of people that have been constantly pushing the boundaries to damage the environment. And we see the results of that. Um, and it is going to be your generation that is responsible, sadly, um, for correcting those mistakes. And to see people that are as passionate as you are in that makes me think that, you um, within maybe 10 years, 15 years, we are going to have a completely different outlook on the way the environment is and on how we can actually live our best lives, but while being kinder to the environment around us. And, um, you know, I encourage all those out there watching this to, you know, take a page from Franz's book and, um, you know, push forward with your dreams and push forward with the idea that, um, you know, your passion can be put into something for good and something that actually benefits the planet. Yeah, thanks. 
Many, many, many thanks for your kind words. Um, yeah, I think I think so as well because, like, also from the first first time I, I saw the Silent Sixty Four, it was obvious for me that that that's it. Like, why going for something else? But I, I don't know. I'm. I also need to say I'm not the like. I wasn't really into boats before, and I have not. I don't share this love for sailing as a lot of others do, and which I totally get. But there's someone who has a choice between a motor yacht, which is for me no choice, and a sailing yacht, and a silent yacht, which combines the the benefits and gives you like all the all those things we we already talked about. Is like. That's it, in my in my opinion. So yeah, whatever. <laughs> so having worked for Silent Yachts now, have you become a lover of of water and yachting to a certain degree? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, um, I used to I, I used to love water sports before already, um, but. Yeah, in general, to spend time on a silent yacht, it's it's very relaxing. It's you are like away from the crowds, not the crowds, the the noise and the city, and um, it's yeah, it's it's always an enjoyable time. And so you can now understand why people in the ages of of you know fifty five or sixty say they want to cash it all in and go sail the world for the rest of their lives. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you're lucky because you don't have to wait until you're that old. You get to do it as often as you like. Yes, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, when we are on the boat, it's always work. Like, yeah, we, we can work remotely, right? We have internet on the boats, on the yachts. We also use it as, as an office space where the team comes together, where we, um, yeah, it's, it's basically usual work, but... The lunch break is much, much better, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine the lunch break would be pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, Franz, I thank you ever so much for joining us here on Yachting International Radio. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. And um, I really would like for you to keep us up to date on all the new and exciting things that you discover going forwards and the, um, you know, the bigger and better that, that you come up with. Yeah. Many, many thanks for, for the invitation again. And yeah, I would love to keep you up to date. Um, let's schedule a new call for today in a year or today in, uh, yeah, today in a year maybe would be a good idea. And then we, we can talk about um, what happened during the last 12 months. But however, thanks again. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I look forward to watching your career carry on and uh yeah with silent yachts and see how big their boats end up being or their yachts end up being as time goes on once again you have been watching another edition of pama yacht crew blogs right here on yachting international radio thank you to friends from silent yachts for joining us my name is ria i have been your host we'll see you again next time bye bye thank you